Hi, I'm Vita Clocky with VitasCollectibles.com. Welcome to my studio for my second fire of the lilacs. Um, I have fired these at uh, 016 if they've been sanded. So come and join me and I'll show you how I'm going to finish up these lilacs. The china paint colors that I'll be using to do the second fire lilacs are the same as the first fire, except I've added a few additional colors I'll be using. Uh, they're mixed with mineral oil to a toothpaste consistency. Uh, we have lilac, pansy purple, rich violet. Of course, I'm adding a little black in case I need to darken those colors. The three values of green, light, like a moss, antique or brown green, dark green. I'm going to need yellow for a few centers. Rich brown for the branch. I may add a little blue violet to change up the color a little on my uh, flowerettes. And I may add cool shadow to some leaves to push them back. The oil I use, my painting medium, is my um, semi-open painting medium. I use a solvent of Turpinoid Natural to do a light wipe out, also sometimes to clean my brushes. And then my final wipe out is odorless mineral spirits that I keep covered in the jar. My basic brushes for these this size of lilac would be my Aquaflow square shader. I'll need a little scroller, two types of wipeout tools, a soft rounded edge flat shader, and a synthetic filbert for a firm wipeout. Now I'm going to take a Stabilo pencil and draw in my light source, which usually would be 11 o'clock. So my light source will be coming through here. And of course the Stabilo pencil line, if I forget to wipe it out, it will fire out. So I will first begin with darkening my branch. I'll need some rich brown. If the light was coming this way, I need to turn my shadows opposite the light source. I may even add a touch of black in a couple of those areas just to push it back and make it look a little different. Give it another extra little value there. I might want to tap in Maybe a little shadow here on this stem. I don't want to make it too prominent. I'm going to clean my brush out a little bit and look at the leaves. Now, I've got the light and the antique, the light and medium green on here. I'm going to go into the medium green with a tiny bit of cool shadow. That will cool that leaf down and push it back. I want to keep a little bit of highlight on there. I might go back and wipe more highlight. And maybe a tiny bit of black green to push that little edge back. Now I try not to cover the whole leaf because if you do, you're losing the transparency of your china paint that's already been fired on there. And you're losing your values if you cover everything that you've painted before. Now these are just secondary leaves, so they don't need too much attention. Let's go antique green with a little cool shadow again back here. And a little darkest green for a third value. Maybe turn it this way and do the comma stroke tip. 
If you watched my first video on the lilacs, you'll see that uh, we went through the strokes individually. Do a little bit of that again. Light or medium antique green. Remember to leave some color that you've already put on there the first time. Leave that showing. This is going to put a little bend in that leaf. I think I need to punch this up here with a darker value. Alright, I might just leave that now and continue on. Let's go down to this grouping. Now this is underneath I can go dark green with a little cool shadow and that'll push gray down that green and push that leaf more into the background. And I'm coming around, I'm trying to leave some of that color on from before. C stroke, bring that around. wanted to leave a little more highlight here, I could still bring that back and push it towards the vein. And then you can pick up that color and stop at the vein and it leaves a little bit of a vein line sometimes, which is interesting. So I think I'll leave that background leaf and go on. Now, this leaf is tucked under, so it's going to need a little bit of shadow. Let's start out with antique green and bring those around that flowery. I don't want this leaf to get too dark. But I do need to push it back. Maybe a tiny bit of black green right up under. I may add more later if I need to pump up that focal area. Let's make this a little rounded here. Cut out a little more highlight and that will give me some secondary veins. I have a little green on my brush. I can touch a little green onto that stem too now if I want to. We're going to do the same thing here on this leaf. Flowerettes a little more form, and I can maybe go back with a liner or scroller if I need to touch those up a little bit after I'm working on my flowers for a while. Now, I always like to add a little bit of blush to those leaves. I'm going to blush with a little bit of lilac. Maybe I'll blush this one too, just a tiny bit. You notice how I'm pulling those back to the vein because that will leave my deposit of color closer to the vein. I think I like that. Let's go on to the flowers now. Of course, I'm going to want to start on the one that's in the back. I did add a little blue-violet into this one, so I might stay out of the blue-violet on this one. And I'm going to go into the rich violet with my uh, flat square shader 
that's got little rounded corners. It's not a an aqua flow. It's not real sharp on the edges, and that's kind of what I want for my flowerettes. <coughs> so pull in the rich violet here. Pull, 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 pull. You have to use a little more oil with your gold base colors, your rubies, your um, purples. You need a little bit more oil to get them to to flow off your brush. Okay, I'm going to tap it in. And walk it out. Now I may switch to Little Pansy Purple. I like that dark area in there. I'm going to leave that. If I get some on the other flowerettes, that's fine. because I'll be wiping those back. But you can see that the little petals are starting to take form. I'm just moving my brush back and forth so they don't all the strokes don't go all in the same direction. Now I may go into just my lightest value lilac here just to give a few of these little flowerettes a little depth. I can always wipe back if it's too much. All right, I think that might be where I'm going to stop with adding Color. I'll go on and do my main flower now. I can always come back to this if I need to pump up those values a little bit. So we'll start out with the lighter value on the light side. So I don't want this to get too dark over here. Just want to give it a little depth between the flowerettes. As I'm painting this lilac, I'm dreaming of spring. We are in the middle of a North Dakota blizzard right now and you can probably hear the snow plow. at this very moment. So it's actually refreshing to paint a beautiful spring flower. Okay, that's my lighter value. I'm going to go over to the pansy and a little bit of blue-violet and start dropping in in my shadow areas without getting too dark because I want her to stay on top but I want these darker values to pop in between the pet the little petals okay I'll see what I have if I'm not happy with my depth, I can always do another fire. But it's better to stay too light than too dark. You can always darken. I might need to add a little color to those so they're not so pure white. All right, now I'm going to do a firm wipe out with my synthetic filbert and the odorless turpentine. Let's find the main 
flowerettes and we'll wipe those out first. I'm going to pay attention a little bit here to what I'm doing because I want these to be very crisp. And like with anything else, you don't need to tell the viewer the whole story. You don't need to wipe out every single little flowerette. Let the viewer imagine now I went into a little oil because back here maybe I don't want quite a, as white of a wipeout just a tiny little impression of a wipeout maybe I want a deeper wipeout right here I'll go into the turp. I might leave this one for now and go on to the main flower. Let's find the main flowerettes that I know will be wiped back. You're looking for contrast here. Light against dark, that will make your petals pop. Most of the details in the middle ground, middle value areas. Some are just three. Some are four. Not they don't all show. And we don't want them all to show it. Too much information. And just keep turning. This is a little flat here. I know I need to find some flowerettes up in here somewhere. The synthetic filberts are a little more firm and they give you a more of a crisp wipeout than a natural hair. Okay, now let's look at interesting outer edges. Does my flower have good form? Well, I'm not so sure, so let's check that. Do I have good in and outs? Yeah, I think so. This one is really firm. Let's maybe change some values on this edge. Because this is against the light, I can make that darker. Same here. Let's look at Adding a few little flowerettes that might be loose. I, I need to darken a few. Oh, not that dark. Take a little of that back. Darken a few of these areas for a little more depth those back in shadow. Okay, now <clears throat> these little tops have tiny little buds that just kind of fly into nothingness. So that's what we'll do here. tool to just see if I can really dig out a few good shapes. Okay. 
I want a few four petal flowerettes at least. I have a couple here, so that's good. Here that will come over that leaf. Let's take the wipeout tool now and find our yellow centers. Clean those back a little bit. Now I could fire this and go back with a wash of blue-green or a cool shadow or if I decided I wanted more blue-violet I could wash some on or I might just leave it. I'd like to see a little more detail up in here if I can find it. Dig it out a little bit. A few of my little branches show up here. I might take my middle value green and, or stems, excuse me. I may put a few more in so they show just a little, a little bit more. Okay, so now at this point, let's take our flat shader here and go into a little bit of the pansy purple and comma stroke a little darker value around a few of the flowerettes just to give them a little bit more form. I can maybe even do some of this with my scroller. Let's clean the scroller and Put a little oil in it and go back into the pansy purple. Divide up a few of these. I don't want to outline them. I just want to create a little more contrast in a few. And I want to make sure, I'm going to go into both my Rich Violet and Pansy Purple, right here where the two meet. Make sure those flowerettes are formed. Light against dark, that's where your eye is going to go, so I want to make sure that that has good contrast there. So I will clean my scroller here and get ready for a little of the yellow centers. You always want to clean your brush very good before you go into any yellows so it's easily contaminated. So let's just do a fine touch of yellow in those centers in the middle value areas mostly. I've wiped out more centers, but I, that doesn't mean I have to put yellow in every one of them. I think it's it's uh, way too much. So more in my middle value areas. And I might stop there at that point.
and form a double check my flowerettes here. So I would fire this at maybe 017 and take a good look and decide if it needs another wash or needs to be pumped up one more time with a few more val darker values because some, some of you are lighter painters so you need some need an extra fire to get the depth that you need. So you have to decide if you want to stay light or if you want to add a little depth. I'm making sure that these petals are cleaned up behind this, this leaf here now. I would sign it. Now oh, and fire and if you decide that you want to do background and middle ground, you can watch my carving video on YouTube. We'll give you ideas how to add these background shadow leaves. And then that, of course, would be fired. And then a wash of atmosphere with yellow and light lavender can be done in a third fire. Thank you for joining me for my second fire on lilacs. Uh, please check the link below for first fire. Uh, also, please subscribe and support my YouTube channel and hit the bell button below to receive notifications of my upcoming videos. Uh, if you're interested in supplies or seminars, please check my website at vitascollectibles.com.